We speak about the patterns of the world in some of our other videos, and in this one, we'll investigate one of the most profound big picture phenomena, which is the metaphor of the pendulum. What happens is when one of two polar opposite forces gains momentum, it creates a systemic backlash, which sends the system back towards equilibrium. And as the system gains momentum in that direction, it tends to overcompensate and then swing to the other end of the spectrum. In my systems thinking video, I discussed the concept of compensative feedback, and that's where systems naturally create a backlash when they're thrown out of balance. This is the force that drives the pendulum. So some of these alternating forces include liberal and conservative. So we go into a liberal cycle where there are a lot of liberal politicians in power and a lot of liberal ideas begin to grow. And when it gets a little too extreme, people see the th flaws in it firsthand and they experience how their lives are suboptimal. So they all push towards restoring what they had. And then people say, see, we were right. Conservatism is better. And then they push the system towards that way. They vote conservative and policies get by, which are far more conservative. And as it goes further towards that end of the spectrum, people feel progress is being held back and the cycle repeats. So another way the pendulum swings is between productivity and unproductivity. Sometimes a company is very productive and they're doing so well they have a surplus of money of income and of materials and everything's just working out great so then they stop focusing on productivity and they sort of sit back put their feet up enjoy the ride they spend lavishly and after enough time doing this suddenly they realize they're unproductive and after being unproductive for a while suddenly they don't have enough money to live lavishly and they have to make cuts, they have to tighten up their efficiency, and eventually they go back towards productivity. And with new businesses and new products, a promising company will start out highly focused on quality. They want to have great customer service. They want to retain every customer. They want to have perfect quality control. And they put an unrealistic amount of time into each order and each item until the point where customers say, hey, this is some great service. These are great products. Everyone everywhere wants them. Then quality ends up being cut because as it scales up, you can't give that same level of attention to each individual. So then quality decreases as popularity increases. And then at a certain point, the quality is so low that the popularity ends up decreasing because nobody wants the products anymore. And everyone says, oh, there has been and then the cycle returns. And another pendulum cycle is between freedom and control. So in a system, when the elements have too much freedom, the system starts to get a little bit out of control. So then people go from the top down and try to enforce new rules and new strategies to keep people and entities in line. And in doing this, the people begin to become unhappy and there's they start to push back and then they destroy these policies and mechanisms of control and then things improve for a while until people end up going a little too far outside of their boundaries and then the whole cycle repeats one final pendulum swing i want to bring up is danger and safety in an organization um if you've gone for a long time without any accidents, then people start to relax the rules. They're not so heavily enforced and people don't put as much money and attention into safety until people become a bit too complacent and then injuries start occurring and mistakes are made. Then there tends to be an overcompensation period where the rules become stricter and safety protocols become a bit more comprehensive and uh, this leads to periods of safety which leads to periods of complacency and this all just repeats so you can see these I just gave you five examples but there's potentially infinite patterns like this of uh, pendula 
that's or pendulums that swing back and forth. I love that word pendula. Uh, it's an archaic term. It's not really used a whole lot these days, but it is official. It is real. I'm allowed to say it. So we have five different types of colossal pendulums. First off, we have the dampening pendulum. This is a process which goes back and forth, but with every swing it loses some energy. Now a dampening pendulum will lead to another type of pendulum, which is a pendulum in equilibrium. The equilibrium state involves no swinging, it's sort of stagnant, nothing's happening, nothing's changing, and this might be good or it might be bad. Generally it's a little bit boring, lacks dynamism, and oftentimes it's good to have a little bit of sway over time. It's a healthy sign. Another type of pendulum is the balanced pendulum. Now a balanced pendulum is one which continues to swing back and forth at a steady rate. Another type of pendulum is the feedback pendulum. Now the feedback pendulum is, it's like a feedback loop with an amplifier when the signal just keeps going through the amp and back out the mic and then getting louder and louder and louder. Now a feedback pendulum will eventually end up reaching a breaking point and this becomes an unsustainable pendulum. The unsustainable pendulum has reached a terminal velocity. It's going as fast and then faster than it possibly can in one direction and what this means is the system doesn't have enough power or control to get the pendulum to swing back and so then it destroys the system. So take for example war and peace. If the pendulum swings back too far and this war becomes too extreme, the entire nation will be destroyed. So we really want to be careful with the feedback pendulum. We need dampening forces to prevent this pendulum from swinging out of control and being destroyed. It takes big picture thinkers with high levels of awareness to detect these pendulum swings and to act intelligently. Uh, in order to dampen the pendulum feedback. What are ways to do this? Well, I'll give you a few. One, detect and neutralize the main drivers of the pendulum. So for example, if you have a news cycle that is particularly authoritarian, sometimes you can stop the news at the source. You can provide alternative news sources or you could defund these news sources or boycott, etc. And uh, you can slow down the pendulum that way. Just an example, but it's a pretty pertinent example. Um, another way we can dampen a feedback pendulum to prevent it from becoming an unsustainable one is to educate others on the history of the system back when it was in balance. So as the pendulum swings back and forth, usually it passes through a good point where if there was no momentum in one direction, it would be in a good spot. But the pendulum keeps swinging. If you can let people know about how things were when things were better, then they'll have some insight into how to return the system to the way it was. So consider the pendulum of productivity versus unproductivity that we brought up earlier. If we're being incredibly unproductive, you know, you can initiate a business meeting and say, look, look at our numbers from three months ago. We're losing all of our money now. We're going downhill. At this rate, we're going to be crashing and we'll have to start laying people off. So they can sort of keep people ahead of the game. So another way to dampen the pendulum swing is to apply sufficient counterforce so this is the hardest thing to do. You won't be able to stop the pendulum alone. But if you become incredibly powerful, skilled, wise, and well-connected, you can dampen the systemic backlash. And incredibly dynamic people do have this ability. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them, but let's take, for example, the Elon Musk Twitter thing. Twitter was swinging towards like insane statist liberalism and censorship and Elon Musk with his incredible wealth stepped in and with his incredible influence as well stepped in and really is shaking things up and all of a sudden the pendulum stopped swinging so far in that direction and it's even starting to reverse the direction back towards centrism. 
So just an example, I'm not some big Elon Musk guy and I don't even know if, if it's him individually or if it's his team or whatever that's making all this happen. He's sort of like a character. He's like the face of a movement. But yeah, I don't know how much power Elon the individual has, but according to the public narrative, it looks like it's quite a lot. Anyways, that's a bit of a tangent, so let's move to the next subject, which is the ultimate pendulum swing, the battle between good and evil. And this battle, it's difficult, it's nuanced, because obviously good is better than bad, right? But there's good with a capital G, and then there's good as in the opposite of bad. Now good with a capital G is the profound type of goodness where you allow evil to exist. It's the whole turn the other cheek thing. Live and let live. But yeah, let's let's talk about the problematic evil first because it's the easiest to understand. So you might ask, why would anyone want a pendulum to swing out of control? And the answer is because they're evil. Those who want to destroy a system will do this. Consider the subversive international forces meddling with politics from other countries. Uh, consider third parties that provide weapons to enemy nations in order to encourage conflict. Consider disinformation campaigns and false flag operations, which adds fuel to the fire. So there's many forces which tend to create a feedback pendulum, and they're usually hostile and evil sources. So when good doesn't practice forgiveness, on the flip side, and stamps out any form of evil beyond what is necessary, it emboldens and motivates the evil. And in other words, even the good guys can be guilty of swinging the pendulum too far. Consider the problem of cancel culture, where people are, who are self-proclaimed good guys attempt to vanquish the internet and discourse of all negativity, which again, it embold emboldens them in the process. The truly wise good guys teach to turn the other cheek, to live and let live, the pendulum must be in balance without too many forces to boost it too far either way, because there will be an inevitable backlash. Consider the term goody-goody, where someone is so obsessively good that it's sickening. It's too artificial and too extreme. It causes contempt and again, it boosts the resolve of evil. Alan Watts has spoken a bit on this subject. and. I recall from one of his lectures, he said something along the lines of, if we didn't have any imperfections at all, we would cease to manifest completely. So stay grounded, don't be so pious you lose track of the world. It is possible for a system to become too productive, too powerful, a competitor too, too effective, or a force too strong. What is far better is a balanced system. Perhaps stagnancy isn't ideal, but certainly the unsustainable pendulum isn't either. So maybe a little swing is good, but not too extreme. Notice these swings. Notice where the pendulum has nowhere left to go and will inevitably rebound back. Stay ahead of the game. And as an enlightened leader, keep those around you informed of the big picture. Thanks for watching.